Hi everybody, welcome to Archie Marathon. We get it, okay, we get it. Your generation has grown up looking at a computer screen and you think that scales have no other purpose than putting, fitting drawings on a piece of paper. You're wrong, super important. What do you mean you people? You people. I don't believe you people. Huh. What do you mean you people? What do you mean you people? Huh? I you know, the youth. Youth. The youth of today. Back in my day, I was flying X-Wings. I was shooting Womp Rats. The blaze to bullseye Womp Rats in my T-16 back home. Here at Archie Marathon Studio, we are seeing this a lot. We're seeing people bringing their laptops and um, projecting on that amazing wall, and they are scaleless drawings. They have no understanding of the scale of which they're, they're producing the work. Why do we work in scale? And actually, scale is not a word that I tend to use. I tend to use the word resolution. And again, it's not about modeling everything up and drawing everything, and then, oh, the tutor said, or the boss said, give me that scale and then you just go and print. Yeah, but we get it, like, let's start with that, we get it. So, you know, we are both love working on a computer as well. If you haven't been brought up with understanding why scale is so powerful and you're just in an environment where you can scroll in and scroll out, that you just go, well, that's it. Like, and, and you can kind of justify going, oh, look, I'm at all scales and no scale all at once. Um, but you get lost in corners, don't you? You get lost in general because there's a strategy in how you move forward. It's making decisions at that particular resolution. So each scale, 1 to 20, 1 to 50, 1 to 100, 1 to 200, 1 to 500, they all have a strategy associated with yes. that scale. Because if you have it printed out and you have it in front of you, or you've just tried to draw it in front of you, that exact scale, you realise you can't draw everything or that you have to draw a lot more because it just looks so empty. So there's a, there's a resolution level that's involved. One to 500, one to 1,000, you can barely see anything. You definitely can't see the toilets. You definitely can't see the sink. But draw you can see the city. You can see the streets. Yes. You can see trees. You can see buildings. Yes. So you can get, make some urban decisions. Yes, and not worry about, have I got the toilet correct? Because you can't even see it. Exactly. Yeah. And if it, you can draw it, it's just prints out to be a blob. So it doesn't matter. And so it allows you to understand with that particular stage. And that's why we design in stages to a scale, because it is about making those kind of decisions. And then moving on to the next scale, you know, blow it up double the amount of size. And then you know, oh my God, that looks so empty. So it's about limiting yourself. And I know that's a dirty word for creativity. It's not. You want constraints. It's about constraining yourself to thinking about a certain scale. And what's really interesting is when you get to, well, actually, it doesn't take that much experience. You get, after you get used to drawing at one to 100, you don't even need a scale ruler after a while. It's like driving a car. You just know how <laughs> wide the car is. You don't yeah. have to think, oh, where's the lane again? Yeah, this is the size of a bed. That is the size of you know, a chair. This is how much I, space I need for a corridor. This. This pen, my favourite 0.8 mil pen, is a. Well, I know that's a stud wall thickness. You can have, and I've seen people do this before, where they've got pens that are associated with. Well, this is the size of a car park at one to one hundred. Mm. I should do one stroke, and it's there. Guess what? You're making decisions super quickly with the stroke of a pen instead of going in, zooming in, click, 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 make polygon. Um, and you intuitively know how big something is and feels right because you can feel it. Because you know, because you're making it with a pen. So one thing I do, because <coughs> otherwise, drawing is just this bunch of abstract line on the page. It's only when you have scale people that suddenly I put that on a drawing and suddenly go, oh, that's how big it is. So I have got one to 25, and I've got one to 50, one to 100, um, and then it gets smaller again, one to 200. 200 is a scale that you can just still see because the person's only you know, yay tall. But when it gets to one to 500, it's just too small. I have, I have one to 500 cars, because that's kind of bigger. Um, and so when I draw, just to put this in perspective, I most of the time, 
drawing at one to 100. So people are still part of the conversation. They haven't become about just buildings in an urban form. But then I very quickly, as soon as possible, get down to a one to 50. So I can actually work out what I'm doing to this person. <laughs> and it becomes more humanist, I feel, mm. in a way. And it's always interesting as well when even designing a city or designing a, a space, as soon as you put that person in there, I find people just go, oh yeah, that feels too big, or that feels too small. They intuitively straight away knows how big something yeah. are. Yes, you can argue you can do that on the computer and put a computer person in there. Yeah. But going back to the point, yes, you get used to a certain scale. You get used to knowing intuitively how big something but should be. But the problem be. with, and I fall for it all the time, I, I work a lot on the computer, um, is we, we all do. you're trying to make, yeah, exactly, we're, we're all slaves to it. You're trying to make some big decisions and you zoom in to sort of go, oh, what is the scale like? So you zoom into the, to the street, you look up and then you, to see, to get it, am I building too much here? And then you look down the corner and go, oh, that's wrong. And you start finding yourself building like a freaking gutter, you know, detail or something like that. And go, hang on, wait, I haven't made the big decisions here mm. yet. Another thing that's very useful with scale is that you get books that are published with scales. So this one here on housing, the beautiful Berkhoise book, um, has plans of housing, some of the most important housing in the last, you know, 100 years. Um, and they are all one to 500 scale or one to 200 scale. So you can straight away reference and understand, oh, that's how big a toilet is, that's how big the organization is, that's how much a big bedroom is. And after a while you see page after page, you realize there's similar kind of sizes and shape. And it's a, it's a good reference to have something that you can reference back to a scale. And if you're drawing at those scales, it makes it easier and quicker to grasp what's happening in these plans. Because I've been drawing at that scale and then you look at it, the, the, the exactly the same thing and you're like, oh, I get it, just at a glance. Some of the other things, you know, even working in bigger projects, like well, how big is a public space? Well, go find public squares, just get it to scale and put it on the site. Mm. You can do it digitally in that case, yes. You can have comparison. You can do that. I, I used to bring in, in Melbourne, Federation Square or even Sydney Opera House. You go, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the forecourt of Sydney Opera House. That's how big it is. How big is this thing you're designing? Oh, it's way too big. Yeah. Scale is a reference to ultimately the human body because that's how we experience things. That's why we do things what they are. As a practitioner, scale makes me concentrate on the decisions that need to be made now. I need to plan how this sits in the city. I don't need to plan the internal you know, details of this. It's about efficient use of time and strategically using that time on relevant things at that particular point in the project. And if you know you get carried away to smaller details when you haven't made the big decisions yet, it's probably a redundant work because you'll zoom back out and go, oh, hang on, this I can't even locate this properly on the site that way. So I've got to start again. It's What's a it? gift. That constraint is a gift. To be clear, though, design is not linear. And any starting point is a valid starting point. So you don't have to make decisions from one to 5,000 get that correct tick and go to the next one. The scales do inform each other. But as has happened many times on um, uh, projects that we've worked on uh, in our office, sometimes we start with the detail. Like there's just some materials we really want to work with. And we're like, I think this is the project. And wouldn't it be great if this material did that? And so we work from a one to you know, five detailed sketch, <laughs> zoom out. Um, so there's no hard and fast rule in no. that it gives you both a, a wonderful constraint but also a freedom in a way but i guess if you haven't worked in those stages and understand that process it is worth just following it from larger to smaller because you know you, yeah, you, oh, you, yeah, yeah. yeah you're talking about you know the discipline of how to actually move yeah the other way it's like you know how to run forward now you know how to run backwards but sometimes um if you have a beautiful space in mind, like, you know, I just imagine this, this mm. queen size bed looking down over that valley and I, it could be arranged this way and then you might get that thing and then at one mm. to 50 mm. and then you shrink it down 
and try to sit it on a 1 to 100 plan or sink it down even more to, and try to sit it on this plan to locate it on the site because mm. it can move then. Mm. Mm. And that's a valid approach. But get used to drawing to scale while you're a student because it's actually pretty frustrating as an employer when you get somebody to come and work for you and say, 1 to 100, please, and they go, oh, and then you get this 1 to 200 drawing. And you're like, and you spent asking? ages on it and you realise the scale's wrong. <laughs> Think oh, of the amount of money God. you've wasted doing that. You know, and it's like, I did it 1 to 200 because it wouldn't fit on the page otherwise. And it's like, well, well that's not the point. That's, the worse, point than, is that's, that that's worse than the scale that's 1 to, to 152.68. Yeah. Yeah. You see that. When fortunately we see that in practice, that is. Just it makes not me on. furious. People just printing saying fit to page and it goes <laughs> down to you, like that is actually you can create a disaster in an office if you go print to, to fit to page. Yeah. Because you'll go down from a hundred percent drawing, it'll go down to like ninety five percent, and you don't even notice it though. So you're working away, and you're like nothing's working here, and um, you're designing for a smaller site then is really there. So so many hours of wasted principal rates. Oh, time. that kind of shit gets you fired. Um, so get used to working at scale now. Do yourself a favor, because you're actually going to be ahead of the pack, really, because everybody else is stuck in virtual land. Something we've been having fun with with the, with the projector here in the studio is that we can actually we go on computer and we just scale it. We go, no, no, no. We bring a ruler out and go, no, no, no. Bring it, bring it yeah. like a little bit smaller, small again. Okay, now that is that site plan from Google Maps. That is now one to five hundred. Now yeah. draw. You actually draw straight onto it and get going, get mm. working at two scale. Yeah. Are we just old and dumb? Leave a comment. Be really mean to one of us. Like. Is scale irrelevant now? Gone. I will argue with you. Let's do this in the comments section, you and me. <laughs> uh, like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification button. Or just press it. You don't have to hit it. You don't, don't hurt yourself. You or smash you it. it. <laughs> Headbutt it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> I should subscribe one day. <laughs> I'm waiting for the channel to get good. <laughs> and then I'll subscribe. <laughs> I'll watch every episode and then I'm like, nah, not yet. These, these two idiots need to get better at this. <laughs>